The largest protest in years that rocked Jordan earlier this month galvanized some Persian Gulf states into action. Saudi Arabia hosted on Sunday a regional summit to address the ongoing economic crisis in Jordan. Protests erupted across the crisis-hit country against price hikes and a controversial tax reform bill backed by the International Monetary Fund. When you go to the IMF, there are always strings attached to those loans. There are conditions. You have to fulfill their own austerity conditions. You have to reduce the, uh, the uh, subsidies and so on, uh, which means that the prices will go up. Or you also have to, uh, to raise the taxes. And that means that there's a lot of pressure on the people. At the summit held in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Kuwait promised Jordan $2.5 billion in aid to ease its economic problem. Many political observers believe that the package is an attempt to nip in the bud a repeat of the so-called Arab Spring. In 2011, the Persian Gulf Cooperation Council made a similar decision amid the uprisings that spilled over across the Middle East. It pledged to help the Jordanian and Moroccan monarchies with a five-year agreement worth over $5 billion each. They know, the Saudis, the Emiratis, they know that if any of the kingdoms, those countries that are ruled by kings and monarchs, if any one of them falls, then it will be a domino effect. It may reach Riyadh itself. So they came up to the aid of Jordan. Historically, Saudi Arabia has proven unreliable in honoring its financial pledges. The kingdom uses them as leverage to keep other Arab states gripped by economic problems in its own camp. Uh, look, look at Bahrain, for example. They went and supported it, and they sent their troops in 2011 to suppress its revolution. And the result is that the Bahraini regime has become a tool in the hands of the Saudis and the Emiratis. The Jordanians are wary of that. They are aware that they are going to be uh, subordinated by the Saudis. And this is why there's a lot of unhappiness among the people about the support that has been promised and pledged by three countries, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates and Kuwait. Amman relies heavily on foreign aid, but the $3.6 billion assistance program it receives each year from the Persian Gulf Cooperation Council, where Riyadh has the clout, has not been renewed since last year. Some speculate that Riyadh cut off the financial support because Jordan was reluctant to accompany the Saudis in the war on Yemen. I think one of the most important conditions is that they should join in the war against Yemen and they should probably cut their relations with Iran. Uh, they should uh, freeze their links with uh, uh, groups in, uh, in Lebanon and elsewhere and probably take a stronger action against the Muslim Brotherhood inside uh, Jordan. Now with accepting the new aid package, Jordan is expected to side with Saudi Arabia in regional conflicts more than before. Saudi aid goes to Amman, but always with strings attached.